the Territory well. He put his heart and soul into the job, and we are grateful that our government can continue to count on his experience and advice. This morning, I ask my caucus colleagues to support me as the new leader for Territory Labor, and they have given me their support. I have been selected as a unanimous choice as leader for Territory Labor. This afternoon, I will visit Her Honour the Administrator at Government House and be sworn in as Chief Minister of the Northern Territory. I want to thank my colleagues for their support today, for the way we have conducted ourselves as a team this week. We've had passionate but respectful discussions. We have each put our views forward, but we have stuck together, and we will continue to do so. We've sorted this out quickly. We're going to keep our focus on the real job, the job of delivering for Territorians. I'm very proud to be elected as Territory Labor leader. I first joined the Labor Party in 1993 as a 15-year-old. I am the daughter of two teachers, a teacher myself. My partner and Paul and I are now raising our two children, Ollie and Henry, here in the Territory because it is the best place in the world. I'm a Territory girl through and through. I've put my hand up to serve because I love this place. I want to work every day to make it better. I've been in Parliament for nearly a decade. I've served on the opposition front bench as a Cabinet Minister and as Leader of Government Business. I'm ready for this job and I will hit the ground running. In terms of the rest of the team, all the other portfolios will remain the same for the next week during the parliamentary sittings. Our focus is Territorians. And following that, a new leadership team and a new Cabinet will be sworn in. And of course there will be some changes. But this government's stability, this government's unity will be our focus. We're focused on creating more jobs right across the Northern Territory. We're focused on growing the economy so it benefits all Territorians, tackling those hard social challenges that the Territory faces. Territorians, my focus, our focus is you. You are our priority. It's been a big week. When I was standing on the sidelines at soccer last week out at Bagot Oval, I certainly didn't expect the week to end this way. It's a bit of a shock, but it's an absolute privilege. I do not take this responsibility lightly. And finally, I can say, I've had a front row seat to this job for five and a half years, working closely with both Michael and Nicole. I know it's a tough job, but I'm pretty tough. I'm territory tough. There'll be easy days, there'll be hard days. I can't promise every day to make you happy. I can't fix every problem overnight, but I can guarantee this. I will listen to you. I will always work my hardest for you. And I'll always put the Territory first. I'm joined today by Deputy Chief Minister Nicole Madison. We've been together through thick and thin, five babies, nearly 10 years in Parliament together. And I am very grateful for her support. And I'll ask her to say a few words before I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chief Minister. Natasha Files. I want to give my full congratulations to Natasha and I am just so proud of her today. I've had the great privilege to serve with her my whole parliamentary career and what I can tell you about your new Chief Minister is that you have got somebody who loves this place, who is so committed to the Northern Territory, who is tenacious, hard-working, determined and she is going to make a huge difference. I see the passion she gives every day to her job uh, for the people of Nightcliffe, but right across the Northern Territory too. So I am absolutely thrilled to have Natasha as the new Chief Minister. The team is united and we're thrilled to have her there in the job too. And I think Natasha's going to do an amazing job. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing Natasha um, lead our team, particularly going into 2024. And uh, it's going to be a big big week in Parliament next week, but I know Tash is first and foremost is determined to make sure that we're delivering for Territorians every day. So again, it's great to hand over to Chief Minister Natasha Files. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to take questions. Chief Minister, will there be significant changes to the way the Territory Government is run under your leadership? I want to provide that stability and that unity that must continue. But yes, we do need to make changes. We need to make sure we keep delivering on those economic opportunities we have. 
We have come through COVID. There is an amazing abundance of major projects, of economic opportunities, and we are facing significant social challenges. But I will keep that stability and unity, but be focused on those challenges ahead of us. Will there be any change to the approach on fracking? We made a commitment to Territorians to have an independent inquiry into fracking. We undertook that. You've got the most comprehensive plan for protecting our environment whilst allowing a safe industry. Those recommendations will be implemented by the end of the year, and my focus will be making sure all of those recommendations are upheld and implemented. One of your biggest new commitments um, in the budget was more money for Indigenous housing. How are you going to expedite that programme because it's just been too slow and most of the money not spent every year so far? So when we came to government in 2016, we had handed, in terms of remote housing, uh, a very abysmal record. We have got on with that job, but it takes time. But you've seen a significant number of houses delivered under the Minister for remote housing, and it's an absolute focus for us. We know to achieve that social change, to get people educated, to have healthy Territorians in remote communities, we must have housing. And so we have got a range of programs, room to breathe, new houses, and we will be out there delivering those houses. Tom, you had a question? There's been a lot said in recent months about the level of crime in the Northern Territory. Is that something that you're hoping to tackle as Chief Minister now? Absolutely. The, the social challenges we face in the Territory, the crime and the antisocial behaviour, it's a big job. We know that we have to change those determinants that we were just speaking to, housing, education, but absolutely that will be a key focus for me as Chief Minister. How will a failed government be different to a gutter government? We want that unity, that stability. We're here for all Territorians. I don't shy away from those tough conversations. I'm born and bred in the Territory, I love the Territory, and it doesn't matter whether you're a big business or whether you're a Territorian in a remote community, I will be there for you. So we'll nothing specific, different. does that mean more of the same? We're focused on the economic opportunities. We've come through that post impex construction phase. We have got a number of major projects, an exciting future where we can diversify our economy. So it will be my focus with my team delivering on those outcomes, but at the same time, making sure every Territorian comes on the journey that we don't neglect those social challenges so, we have. So sorry, just to continue the theme, so you weren't expecting this job at the start of the week. You're now Chief Minister, no disrespect, but you can't um, identify anything that's going to be different. Are you ready to take up this job? I can absolutely assure Territorians I am ready for the challenge of being Chief Minister. I am excited at the opportunity. I will provide them stability and unity, but at the same time, I am my own person. I will put my own mark on that role and people will see that over the coming weeks and months. So did, either of you actually, did either of you actually have the ambition to have the top job and could we see a change in approach in that you're actually going to be looking to see what the Territory wants rather than having kind of uh, the desire for the power to be the Chief Minister? can absolutely assure Territorians, when someone runs for Parliament at 38 weeks pregnant, you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it for your community. And that has grown. I've been very proud to be a Cabinet Minister for five and a half years, and now I've got the strengths and skills to step into this role. But absolutely, I do love to talk, as you all know, but I will be there to listen to Territorians, to have those tough conversations so that we can all prosper. Well, no I'll go to Tom and then Amy. So no changes to Cabinet, does that mean you're Health Minister, Treasurer and Chief Minister? So we have another busy parliamentary sittings next week. I will be sworn in this afternoon as Chief Minister and I'll pick up the portfolios that the Chief Minister has. Uh, Treasury, uh, there's some defence projects and major projects. I'll pick those up. We'll have stability uh, in Parliament next week and then the team will come together uh, from there to make further changes. Will Amy? Will Nicole Madison be your Deputy Chief Minister at the 2024 election? So it's been a big week and I acknowledge outgoing Chief Minister Michael Gunner and all his work. I'm going to step up, pick up his portfolios. Uh, Nicole is the Deputy Chief Minister. But as I said, we will come together over the next week, the Territory Labor Caucus, just as we have to elect me to this position, uh, and we will work together what's in the best interest of the Territory. Well, well, say, say, you were say you were elected just then. Um, does that mean that there was a contest inside the caucus just before and was Nicole Madison the person you were competing with? So as I just said uh, earlier, we had respectful discussions, we had uh, diverse discussions, but unanimously I have been asked by my Territory Labor Caucus to be the leader of the Labor Party and the Chief so Minister of the Northern Territory. Put your hand up for the role as well. 
well. So it is a team. We have got a great depth of talent in that sure. team. But can you tell Territorians honestly if there was another person and was it Nicole Madison who also sought that role? What I can tell Territorians is I have unanimously been appointed as the leader of the Territory Labor Party and the Chief Minister of the Northern Territory. Tom, How do you describe the, in, the atmosphere inside caucus? Was it very tense? No, it was positive. We're a team. We're professionals. We come together. Uh, clearly, it is a change uh, and people uh, had the opportunity to speak, but it was a positive environment and I thank uh, my caucus colleagues for their support. You are commonly associated with the left fraction. Were your elbows picked? I can assure you there's been no conversations this week with Anthony Albanese. Uh, I've been busy in the parliament. Uh, we have been focused on the task at hand uh, and I look forward to continuing that next week in my new role. Can you reverse the um, pay freeze for public service? So here in the Territory, we need to make sure we have got a budget, a wonderful budget, that has uh, turned the Territory around, but we need to make sure that we bal balance that economic uh, as we head forward so that all Territorians can prosper. So uh, there certainly will be, over the coming weeks and months, uh, lots of discussions. Uh, we're hoping that with the number of projects coming here to the Territory, our population growing, the investment we're seeing, the increase in GST, that we will be able to make decisions to ensure that that economic prosperity reaches across to the social challenges challenges we have in the Territory. Would you allow exiled Labor member Mike Turner back into the caucus? That would be a question for the caucus. It sounds like, um, given you weren't expecting a job at the start of the week and you haven't identified anything that you plan to change, it sounds like you need a week to work out what you want to do. Is there nothing you can point to that's going to be a central priority for your government that wasn't under, under Mr Gunn? So I have just outlined that economic opportunity. So we went through a very tough period after the Impex post-construction phase. We have had challenges through COVID and the Territory stepped up and they've done extremely well. We now have a number of projects, a number of opportunities. The Territory is the focus of the nation. We can be the focus of Southeast Asia. And so I will grow those opportunities, but I won't be neglecting those social challenges we have here in the Territory. I hear that loud and clear from the community. There is already concern about the management of the new uh, lithium uh, industry that's really starting up in the Territory now. How will you better manage that? manage that given that the first project that started already appears to be uh, ha having a legal runoff into the environment. So we have a strong environmental protection regime. We're committed to protecting the environment for future generations and we will make sure that's upheld. But we are open for business. We need to find that balance in the Territory and I can achieve that. What do you see as your biggest challenges ahead of you and how, how will you improve on them from your previous so I think that the biggest challenge is the economic opportunity that we've got. It is here. People have noticed the Territory. We need to make sure we drive home and deliver those projects. But equally, those social challenges we face, they're big issues, and I'm determined uh, to focus on those and have those tough conversations. One of the criticisms of your predecessor was that he kept things very close-knit within his own office, within a very small circle, excluding at times other Cabinet Ministers and caucus members. Do you um, attend, intend to take a different approach to how you deal with your colleagues? I think Michael did an excellent job. It was a privilege to be a cabinet minister for five and a half years under his leadership, but I am my own person. Uh, you guys know that, and I certainly will be, uh, as chief minister, sharing that. Were any promises made to members of the right faction in order to get them to put their support behind you? I put myself forward as the best choice as Territory Labor leader and I have been unanimously supported by my colleagues. I am grateful for their support. Anyone knows me, I'm a straight shooter and that is what I have uh, said to them. How do you feel about taking up the job on part of the check -in? Yeah, well, I hadn't thought of that till you just raised it, but it's an absolute honour and privilege. Uh, it certainly will be challenging at times, but I'm ready for that challenge and I've proven to Territorians that I can work incredibly hard, that I can balance the commitments I have with a family and ensure that the Territory grows. It is the greatest place in Australia and the world and I want to share that with all Australians. You're now Chief Minister. You have a large number of portfolios. What does this mean for the people of Nightcliff? Are you still going to have time to look after your electorate? Uh, that would be a question for the people of Nightcliff, but to everyone that knows me, I am Nightcliff through and through. I'll count Rapid Creek and Coconut Grove in that, but I'm here for all Territorians, whether I'm in uh, Darwin, whether I'm uh, out and about in the Territory. Uh, I've spent my life travelling the Territory as a kid driving up and down the Stewart Highway out to Nullumboy when it was a, a dirt track that took four days. I enjoy getting out every day, meeting with, listening to Territorians. There was Did some the discussion this week have... about a possible ICAC investigation into the Chief Minister's office. Uh, now that you're in the Chief Minister's office, 
uh, as the Chief Minister, are you going to be seeking advice from the ICAC as to whether or not there is an investigation going on? So the ICAC is independent. Uh, formerly, I had a role on the um, parliamentary committee that uh, saw the oversight of the ICAC, but the ICAC, we established it so Territorians could have confidence in the decisions that were made by government, that they were in the long-term interests of all Territorians, not the short-term interests of a few. So there would be questions for the ICAC, but I certainly uh, support having an independent commissioner against corruption in the Territory. Did the Labour caucus consider um, how your, um, the choice of you as Chief Minister would have an impact in the federal campaign, and what do you think it will mean for Labour's two federal candidates? Territorians are smart. They know that a Labor government nationally will deliver for the Territory. We've seen that in commitments around remote housing. We know that federal Labor understands the difference of cost delivery. It costs more to deliver services in the Territory. We're overcoming significant social challenges. So uh, Territory Labor, federal Labor, we understand the Territory. There's a roughly equal chance Scott Morrison could be Prime Minister again in a week's time. Can you work with him? I will work with whoever's in Canberra to deliver for Territorians, and I've got a track record of doing that. Just ask uh, Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt, look at what we've achieved through the Centre for National Resilience, but also funding into health in the Territory. Tom? Have either the Prime Minister or the Opposition Leader called you this morning to offer their congratulations? Uh, as you can imagine, my phone has been very busy. I've actually taken my watch off because uh, I couldn't stand the buzzing any longer. So to everyone that's reached out to offer their support, I truly appreciate it. Uh, for Territorians, I am here for you. I will listen. I will work each and every day for all of you. Thank you very much.